So welcome back guys. Today we are back at Eric's place where we've been milling all of the lumber and I'm really kind of on the home stretch here of getting these logs done. I've got a job to do close to my house after this and after that I'm just going to have the sawmill at my house to do personal projects and also uh, if somebody wants to bring logs to me I'll be happy to do them there as well. But right now we're kind of in between rainstorms. I'm hoping to get some things accomplished here uh, between the rain. Uh, so let's get the tractor going and see what we can get done. Before we start cutting this log, let's talk about it for a minute. This is just a southern yellow pine log or yellow pine, whatever you want to call it. And there's really nothing at all special about this log. There's literally billions of these things in my area. Uh, and this one is on the small side. I've already measured it and uh, we're looking at 11 and a half inches by 11 inches so what we want from this log it is a little on, on the small side but what we want from it is just a six by six we're cutting nothing but six by six timbers today and uh, we're just going to take this and cut a few slabs off it's just going to be four simple cuts and we'll get our six by six out of it quick and easy so let's go ahead and do it sometimes i have people ask what i'm using for lube on the mill and i'm using off-road diesel i got turned on to using diesel fuel as lube by the gentleman that saw those super super long boards for me for the rafters for the sawmill shed or the shed that we expanded not long ago and uh, it's been really a game changer especially with the southern yellow pine it's real pitchy stuff and with the diesel fuel I mean you get nothing whatsoever as far as buildup goes and you don't use a whole lot diesel's real expensive right now but you don't use very much at all I'll try in a minute to show you just how little it that gets used of it So that cut was uh, nine something. I can't really remember exactly where I had it. So what we've done, we flipped it over and now I'm gonna just put it on, on this particular mill, six and just a little bit over a quarter will give me a six inch cant. We're going to finish up that log in just a minute, but before we do, I know that most of you are familiar that on the channel I like to plant food plots for the benefit of the wildlife on our place here. And I get my seeds from a company called Real World Wildlife Products. And how that business deal works, it's really more of a friendship and less of a business deal. They send me the seeds because they're really, really nice people. And I plant the seeds on the channel basically as a thank you to them for sending me these really great seeds. Well, right now there's a raffle going on for a charity that is connected with real world wildlife products. The charity is called Lester's Feet. And I've got a video, it's a pretty short video that I'd love for you to watch and consider purchasing a raffle ticket to benefit this charity that I believe to be a very worthy cause. The Lester's Feet Foundation is a 100% volunteer nonprofit organization whose sole mission is to help families with sick children. The impact on families who have children with life-altering illnesses can be devastating and often requires one or both parents to be away from work. Through our fundraising efforts and the help of our generous donors, 
Lester's Feet works with families to help alleviate the financial burdens associated with caring for their children through such a challenging time. 100% of donations and fundraising profits go directly to the families we are supporting. We are excited to announce that Solid Rock Chapel in Sullivan, Illinois is supporting our foundation by hosting a huge raffle with $150,000 worth of prizes, including a new Chevy truck, a John Deere tractor, a material kit to a post-frame building, and much more. The drawing will be on July 4th, 2022, so please visit us at www.lestersfeetfoundation.org to purchase your raffle tickets and learn more about our organization. So I think that y'all can see that pretty well, but you see that drip right there? That's the amount of diesel fuel that's going on to the blade. It does not take very much, and a gallon of diesel fuel uh, can probably do 10 or 15 logs. This one actually turned out to be five and three quarter by six. I'm not totally sure what happened there. I guess I wasn't paying enough attention on the mill when I was cutting it, but for what it's gonna be used for, not a big deal. It'll pass perfectly fine. Before we go any farther, we need to make a place to put those, which is really something that I already should have done.
This timber turned out a lot better than the last one. This one is pretty much dead on six or six and a sixteenth by six and six and an eighth or something like that. So pretty close on this one. I'm pretty, pretty happy with it. And that little extra thickness will account for if there's any shrinkage or anything like that, that'll help out just to kind of uh, give it a little wiggle room to shrink. I think what I'm going to do now is just set a time lapse. I'm done with the filming, the moving the camera around for the day. And I think I'll just set a time lapse to some music or something like that and work for another hour and see how many logs I can do in an hour. That's going to do it for this one. I appreciate y'all watching and I will see y'all on the next one. The answer to how many logs I can do in an hour might just be one. I was going along and the mill vomited out this piece of rubber. I think it's part of the belt that goes on the wheels. Let's open it up and check it out. The only thing I can think is that it is a piece of one of these uh, belts right here. But I don't see anything on this one. Let's check the other one. I was really hoping it was off of that because that would have been the simplest fix. I guess it's off another belt. It's off this belt here. This is the belt, the drive belt, basically, that goes from the engine to the uh, to these wheels here and turns the blade. And I don't know if you can see it, but right here it starts off being kind of stripped off a little bit. And it's it came from there, I suppose. So that's really not an emergency. I can keep I can keep working with that little problem there, and I'll just go ahead and order another one of these belts. Check out the tension in this log. Put my whole hand in there. Ended up getting five in that hour and I actually fudged just a little bit. I went over time by about three minutes or so. I figured I earned that because I had to stop and check the mill and make sure it was still okay to run after it vomited out that little piece of belt. Thankfully it wasn't an emergency. I can get a, I can get a new belt ordered for that tonight uh, if I remember. So today I've cut seven of these and uh, yesterday, or I know it wasn't yesterday, I guess it was a few days ago, I came over and cut a few as well. And Eric is planning on using these to build something. I'm not really sure what he's planning to build, but I got here the other day and he said, I don't need any more two by fours. I just need some six by sixes. So if you can make some six by sixes out of this, um, that, would, that would be great. So most of that pile, not all of it, but most of the pile that we were just looking at is gonna end up being just those six by sixes. There are still a few large pine logs in good shape left over here and I'm going to use these as my half to make 2x4s out of. This is Eric's 2x4 collection here that I've cut for him. I did a rough count and it's probably about 230 2x4s in this stack. A 
And now I'm going to try to end the video again. I really appreciate y'all watching, and uh, I will see y'all in the next one.